Training is an exciting topic that everyone's been looking forward to, right, Miss Lappin? Been there, done that. <laughs> well, as you know, I sent out a bunch of uh, uh, video snippets, yeah, whole meetings, and as well as snippets by subject right. of the two uh, training sessions we had with NHMA mm. over the course of two years, asking people to tell me what they would like to focus on. Okay. And I got zero response, <laughs> which means I have zero to say. <coughs> but I did, I did actually do some work in terms of what I thought it might be useful. And, uh, and I still welcome you to, to, to think of something you might want to emphasize. Um, so, again, I just a, a reminder of what the purpose of the Budget Committee is to assist the voters. This is right out of the RSA, uh, as well as it's intended to be the budgetary authority, similar to a legislative appropriations committee. That's what we do. That's who we're supposed to be, anyway. These are some of the definitions. Uh, by the way, I, I will get this uh, presentation emailed to you so you can reference it, or I'll put it up on the website. By the way, what do you think about putting up that website? I haven't published it yet. Should I publish it, Mr. Lapp? Why not? Okay. I think it's very informative. You should publish it. Okay. I think a lot of people, else would yeah, it absolutely. will eliminate getting <laughs> a lot of calls. And it's there. It's available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I still have some tweaking to do because I'm not technically satisfied with it, but once I do, I'll get it up sometime prior to September. How's that? So once when we begin to... Can, we, our real can we get a, a more definitive answer when it'll be up? <laughs> no, because my wife dictates my time schedule, so <laughs> I have to call her in for that one. <laughs> Uh, so these are just the definitions that came right out of the law, what appropriate means, what an appropriation is, and purpose. Now, it's noteworthy that under purpose, okay, mm. it, it, purpose is defined as a warrant article, or in the case of a budget warrant article, it's a line in the budget. Now, that's not a subline like we talk about sublines all the time. You know, like uh, uh, this is Department of Revenue Administration line items. Right. Now, for decades, we've been going by what's called the municipal chart of accounts, right. which do not relate directly to the Department of Revenue chart of accounts. <laughs> they have their own system. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is, is we do all this voting on the municipal chart of account line items. Oftentimes in the years, we've even done it on subline items, which is absurd, because they have no legal meaning. Right. And then the finance director maps all that information into the DRA chart of accounts because that's what the MS, MSA, MSR, MS, MS forms, MSA. the MS forms require to be in DRA MS chart of accounts. So in the past, we've never actually voted on what we were signing on that document <laughs> until last year. Right. Thankfully, Mr. LeBranch uh, saw the wisdom in this and, and he changed it. So last year we made motions based on DRA line items. I saw that at the public hearing. That's yeah. what he did last year. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, and, you know, I talked to Christy last year, and, you know, because she was a little confused why we're doing that, and I explained it, and she understood totally. And she indicated that she would uh, intend to reformat the budget book to reflect the DRA line items, but we're still going to retain the municipal account subline items. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm not sure exactly how she's going to do that. Um, and I, I want to have her come in and explain it to us at some point. In fact, Regina, did you happen to touch base with her on that question? No, I was going to ask you because I didn't know if I was supposed to or you, you said you were going to. I thought you said you were going to see her on Monday, so you were going to ask her. It's a casual thing. We haven't asked her yet. Um, whether uh, or not June would be better. Or... June or September or whatever, yeah. yeah. Looking for when it would be good, best for her to come in to explain to us uh, uh, that. But that comes under next meeting topic, which is further down the line. So I just wanted to highlight that there are the key definitions that I think are key definitions in RSA 32 in terms of what an appropriation means, what appropriate means in a budget. Uh, notice all of this refers to approval by the legislative body. Right. And we all know who the legislative body is, don't we, guys? <laughs> it's the town meeting voters. In a town meeting form of government, the legislature is the voters. The Board of Selectmen is called the governing body. They do not have authority to appropriate money. 
they do have authority to move money from one line item to another line item, but it's limited. Okay? They're not actually appropriating new money. They're just moving money around. Okay? Only the voters, the legislative body, can appropriate money. I just want to emphasize that. This is a, uh, an HMA talking about the, uh, the budget cycle. I don't know if you want to hear this or not. But given that we have it connected, you might want to see something anyway. Use sort of this figure, this picture here, to to give you an idea of the budget cycle. Obviously, it's it's a it's sort of a constant cycle because you know there's preparation of the budget in the fall, that sort of that around that time frame. There's adoption of the budget in March, and then there's just sort of you know monitoring of expenditures and getting ready to again propose another budget in the fall. Um, and so being aware of the expenditures that are going on and being aware of how the budget is working out is part of the budget committee's role as well um, and so this just gives you an idea that that is sort of how the cycle cycle of life in the budget world works cycle of life in the budget yeah. committee it's a constant cycle yeah mm -hmm. you know I ran through the 2018 warrants and because I want to get a feel for just how much money we are appropriating. Last year, among all the warrant articles, we appropriated over $66 million. And that did not include the village districts. So between the SAU 90, and that didn't include your renovation bond from the year mm -hmm. either, before either. Right. So the year before was even larger. But that's the kind of responsibility that we have that I think we could take more seriously than 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 past years maybe we did so i would like to see you know more uh, more heads down work on some of this stuff because 66 million dollars maybe we need it probably we do who knows that's for us and the voters to decide ultimately but we advise the voters we advise the legislative body and we should be cognizant of the fact that last year we advised the voters to appropriate over 66 million dollars I just want to highlight that. Not all of us did. Huh? Not all of us did. <laughs> well, we as a body did. Yeah. So. Right. All right, there are seven key concepts uh, that NHMA presented. And um, this one on the left, which is from 2015, is 45 minutes. This one on the right from 2016 is like an hour and 15 minutes. So guess what? I'm not going to play them. I'm going to leave that to you guys to play it at home, okay? As I said, I'll get, them, I'll get these presentations out to you. And by the way, these, you already have them anyway because I sent you these. Right, you sent the, yeah. the full verses in. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so this one is on general principles, which I forgot exactly what's in here, so let me take a peek at it. I don't think it's too long. Ten minutes. Can you tolerate ten minutes? No, maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. You okay with that, Brian, Mr. Lapham? Hampshire. The first thing we try to always emphasize is that um, does New Hampshire have home rule? And there are some states that have home rule. Uh, but we're not one of them. Uh, all the power that towns and cities have come from the legislature. So generally, and, and Margaret and I spent a lot of our time speaking on the phone uh, and answering questions by email. A lot of the time, the first thing we do when someone calls and says, can we do X? Like I, I got a call the other day, uh, the sophisticated question of a town near the Vermont border, which I think is where the question came from, could we have something called an integrated zoning ordinance? Well, I didn't even know what an integrated zoning ordinance was, but I found out what it was because it's a unique kind of development zoning regulation, which only is in existence in Vermont. So what, what I have to do, I have to do the research in order to provide the answers. So that's what we spend a lot of our time. That's the first thing we do when I get a question like that. Well, is there a statute that says a town can do that? I don't know, know there isn't. There's one in Vermont, but there's not one in New Hampshire. So and that's a lot of, that's the first thing a lot of times we'll do, is that a, a statutory power that can be inferred, or a statutory power that can be inferred from another statute that a, a town or city can do something. Um, and it's not enough to say that a law doesn't say, there's no law that says we can't do it. 
you really have to find something that says, yes, this is a, an authority a town or a city has, or it can be inferred as inherent to a particular statutory authority. Um, now, one of the, the, the key elements of the budget process is RSA Chapter 32. Everything pretty much that is significant to how the budget committee does its job, because you have an official budget committee, your town meeting voted to have an official budget, budget committee that incorporates certain elements of the statute. Um, but it also applies to all towns. So there are standard procedures that are set forth in RSA Chapter 32 that apply to all towns. Uh, then those in particular uh, are a set of rules that apply to towns with an official budget committee. And of course, you all know that the, the key authority that the budget committee has, it's central. And I just would share, again, I was on a budget committee for two years in my town, so I have a little bit of understanding what you go through, but real veterans of a budget committee know that two years is, is hardly anything. In any case, um, the real key authority of the budget committee is you have a break on the ability of the town meeting to raise money. And they can't raise more than 10% above the amount recommended by the budget committee, uh, taking out certain things that are fi called fixed costs. And that's really key to the authority of the budget committee. Um, and I guess uh, the other thing that's key in a town, perhaps not so much like Hampton, but in other towns that have charters, there may be a charter provision. Now, a charter is a form of home rule that is authorized by the legislature. So you have city charters and you have town charters. Uh, for instance, uh, Newmarket has a town charter. Portsmouth has a city charter. So if you had a, a charter, you also might turn to the charter provisions to help you understand how you go about your business of being a budget committee. Um, so as I've said, um, the purpose of the budget law in part um, is to make sure there's a uniform method by which uh, the appropriation and spending by of public funds is carried out. And it, and it applies to all municipal corporations, school districts, village districts, everyone, even if they don't have a budget committee, they're subject to uh, the first, I believe it's seven or eight uh, sections of the budget law. Without a budget committee? Yeah. The first 13? First 13 per, uh, sections of the budget statute, RC Chapter 30, will apply to all towns. Um, one of the things that's in the preamble that uh, it gives us other insight of what the legislature meant, this is in RSA Chapter 32, it says the budget committee in those municipalities that have established one, like Hampton, is intended to have budgetary authority analogous to that of the Legislative Appropriation Committee. So sometimes if you're trying to figure out, well, what's our role in terms of the relationship to the adoption of the budget process in the town meeting, that gives us some insight. That's what the legislator, legislature intended. Um, a couple of other things that are important with the general principles, the, the, the budget law also has other breaks on the action of public officials. Violators, those who spend money without an appropriation or overexpend the bottom line, those people under RSA Chapter 32 can be removed from office. In fact, there's a very well-known case, Blake versus the town of Pittsfield, which I'll mention. Although it doesn't directly touch on the budget law, it highlights the impact of violating the appropriation requirements of any particular department. And in that department, and this happened in the 1980s, the Pittsfield police chief uh, was told repeatedly that he was overexpending his overtime line item. Uh, and was eventually going to overexpend his budget as a whole. And the select board told him once, twice, three times, don't overstand your budget. And eventually he overspent it again. He had a different opinion about the necessities of public safety. Um, and he was removed from office. Now that was a removal of a police chief. And it wasn't necessarily done under the budget law, but it gives us insight. You know, if you don't follow the guidelines, and, and we'll talk about guidelines in terms of appropriation and bottom line budgeting, um, you can be removed from office. Uh, now, removal isn't automatic, although one of the interesting things about the budget law, which you may all know, um, and uh, this is in RSA Chapter 32.16, if a budget committee member misses four meetings, consecutive meetings, they're out. Uh, I mean, it's automatic, and I think I don't think there's any other statute in the laws that I'm familiar with for public officials where you have an automatic removal. But I think that's, that's unexcused, what it says. Steve. What's that? For consecutive unexcused. I don't, I'm not sure if the word unexcused is in there, but uh, it's 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 for uh, absences. Right. Um, the other uh, uh, limitation or break on the actions of the municipal organization that occurs, it's not just an official to be removed. 
but also the DRA, the Department of Revenue Administration, and they are also kind of looking over your shoulder the whole time in this process. They can disallow appropriations that do not conform to their interpretation of the budget law. And I say that advisedly because sometimes they're not necessarily correct in their interpretation of the budget law, but they can disallow appropriations. Um, again, co continuing on with general principles, there's really two basic divisions of authority in a town. You've got the legislative body, which is the town meeting, and you've got the governing body. So the governing body can be the select board, the village district commissioners, or the school board. Obviously, the legislative body is always the town meeting, school district meeting, or the village uh, district meeting. Two different distinct organizations. And clearly, uh, I, I think it's fair to understand that it's the legislative body that adopts the budget in the final instance and uh, that's done by the SB2 ballot here in Hampton. Um, and uh, it's the uh, select board who implements the budget, carries it out during the rest of the year. Um, so budget committees are not required. It is not something that the statute mandates. That is a, a selection, a choice that a town makes. Obviously, Hampton has made a choice to have a town, uh, uh, an official budget committee. Um, you can also have, many towns do have this, an advisory budget committee, where uh, it's merely advisory, but the budget committee uh, suggests to the, uh, the town meeting as a whole. I, and one of the things that the Supreme Court has said in a number of its opinions, the role of the budget committee is to do that kind of detailed examination of the spending and proposed spending of the town to make a rational judgment of what what kind of spending a town can actually afford from the point of view of the citizens so that you know the ordinary voter doesn't have to spend the time with those big thick budget books and i've seen them before i've carried them around the town the budget meetings myself you know with line by line of all those information you, you rely on the budget committee to do that digging and to get that information so that those recommendations come to the town meeting in terms of uh, what is eventually proposed for adoption by the town. So it's a lot of meetings um, at different stages of the process. I can only tell you my experience, uh, and every town is a little bit different. You know, you've got budget committee governing body meetings, and they can be an unlimited number, um, and they're only subject to the public meeting rules, which we've discussed in 91A. Um, I, I would just uh, then you have budget hearings. And now in an in in SB2 town, I believe, if I'm correct, it's the last the budget hearing has to occur before the second tuesday of january but don't hold me to that i'd have to go look at our calendar one of the things that we do actually do as a resource and i'll remind you of it we do and we spend a lot of time on it and it's one of our favorite jobs isn't it margaret <laughs> we spend about a month putting together these calendars that are on our website they're designed to give now you, you program, the exact time expect. frame of how you do things from a to z in a town uh, and we have one for SB2 March, April, and May. We have traditional town meeting uh, uh, March and April, and then we have a, a uh, general, calendar. general calendar. And so they're there. So if you have a question, gee, what's the date we have to hold that budget hearing? You, know, you can go to that calendar, you can look at it. Um, and then you also have, uh, as I said, you have budget hearings you have to have, and then you have the deliberative session, which in a sense is another hearing. Uh, because it's the, the opportunity for the voters to come out and discuss, debate, and potentially amend some of the Warren article within certain rules which are set forth in RSA Chapter 40. Yeah. Good well, stuff. Any thoughts on general principles? Anything come to mind you'd like to emphasize? It's funny they mentioned Portsmouth. You know, we only have 13 cities in the state. And Cities are much different. I mean, a city council has much more authority. They approve everything. Well, they are the legislative body. Well, yeah, but they approve the school. Unlike here, we have a school board that approves theirs. <coughs> but they approve everything. But that's because they are the legislative. That's right. The, see, guys, that's the difference between a city and a town. Yep. In a city, we have city councils, or a town, we have town councils. Those councils are the legislative body. The voter is not that's the correct. legislative body. The beauty of a town meeting is... The voters are the legislative body. That's right. Only they can appropriate money. Yeah, it's quite different. When you're in a, in a, in a council form of government, all you get to do is vote for personalities. <laughs> you don't get to vote on anything of substance, just personalities. Nine people bunch make of, a decision. A bunch of promises that <laughs> seem to rarely come to fruition, and then when they do, people complain about them.
about that. So <laughs> but it is quite interesting. So a town meeting is unique. It's precious. And in fact, the United States could not have been established without it. That sense of self-government that town meeting engendered is what gave our founding fathers of this country the passion to put everything on the line. Everything, everything, even their own children on the line. To fight a war against the most powerful country on the planet at the time, Britain. And one of the things for you, when it kind of students in the audience, we became an SB2 town in 1997. And interesting enough, more people have voted since then, but we've actually approved more monies, millions of dollars via SB2 when the original intent was thinking we're going to save money uh, in the Senator Keogh at the time, the legislature. But I find it ironic. We've actually spent more the other way through this system versus the old town meeting where when you left mm -hmm. there, you not only had your, I mean, you walked out of there, you know, saying these warrant articles were approved. You walked out of Winnicott and High School, wherever you were, and the budget was approved. Versus now, it's it's a whole process as was outlined there. So, it's just kind of fascinating. It's been 21 years. Uh, it's amazing how time flies. But yeah. Anything else on? Uh, That's it. Thoughts on general principles? I thought that was a particularly good slide because it wasn't Very too good. long. Yeah. A little bit long on the two, but not too long. I like the others, and I thought it gave a general overview of, of what uh, what we need to do as far as. Uh, uh, I also had something here on multi-year contracts because it's something I think we pay too little attention to, multi-year contracts. And you can see I grabbed some information from NHMA's webpage, which it says um, that specific statutory authority permitting municipalities to enter into multi-year contracts is vested in the legislative body, not the governing body. The legislative body clearly says right there. Yet. We don't often see that actually playing out, do we? So I think we need to probably pay a little bit more attention as a budget committee to um, those uh, errors of omission, shall we call them. Mm -hmm. Now, multi-year lease agreements are also considered multi-year contracts and are subject to because uh, they're considered long-term debt, like a bond, require a three-fifths majority vote. Now, I'm bringing this up because this is one of the points that I think is going to be brought up this year in the budget session because of Article 13 of 2018 was a five-year lease for two garbage trucks. Okay? Now, this passed... You can see it on the bottom by 50.6%. And we're leasing those trucks. Now, as you recall, last year when we reviewed this, it was like we have an escape clause that if it doesn't get funded in the subsequent year, we can get out of the contract without, without cost. Mm -hmm. right? So what this means is you can anticipate seeing another warrant article to appropriate money for the second year in this contract and so forth, okay? One of the problems that, that I see with this is a practical one, is that what if the voters decide not to approve it in year two or three, for example? Now, you know, we have this thing called the no means no law. When the voters say no, that means you can't find some other way of funding that. You can't do it at all. And so if they say no in year three, for example, that means we can't go on these garbage trucks, so what do we do for garbage trucks? <laughs> so that becomes, you know, a potential operational problem. Um, but you can also see that if they put in a fully sanborinized uh, warrant article here, which would have required a three-fifths vote, it wouldn't have passed and we wouldn't be able to lease them at all. So... That's apparently the give and take. I believe the town manager several years ago actually made mention of, of having to reappropriate money in subsequent years. Sure, on this. Yeah. So he knew right. at the yeah, time. Yeah, I believe that's the plan that we'll have a similar. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to highlight, I'm only highlighting those things which I think are well, general things important. to keep in mind as well as things that might come up this year. Okay. So any, any thoughts or comments on that? No? 
I, I was going to expand, but I didn't. This, I spent a lot of time on RSA 32 colon 11, emergency expenditures, but all of that work is for not now because we're going for a special, special town meeting instead of using this mechanism. Yeah. Mm. So I'm not going to get into that.